Well, y'all look real comfortable. How about standing to your feet? To honor God's Word and, and the presence of the Spirit here with us. And let's say this together. Father God, Father God thank, you thank you for your precious Holy Word. Thank you for the precious Spirit of God in my life that is making your Word a living reality. And I believe this day, by your Word and your Spirit, you will continue to illuminate my understanding with a revelation of your Holy Word. And I'll not just be a hearer only. But I'll be a doer of your word, and I will prove your good, acceptable, and perfect will for my life, for your kingdom, for your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as you're being seated, won't you turn into your Bibles to Acts chapter 10, verse 38. We'll talk about Jesus' yoke-destroying anointing. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. And as we look at this, remember this. The Bible says, Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Isn't that a wonderful promise? God never changes. He's always the same. You may change. Man may change. But God never changes. Hallelujah. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ the same, never changes. His purpose is still the same. You know, the Bible really tells us very plainly what the purpose of Jesus coming here was. Of course, he, he had many uh, reasons for coming. Uh, he come to redeem us back to God, to bring the life of God back to mankind. But in order to do that, he had a purpose that had to be fulfilled in order for him to do that. And that purpose is still being fulfilled. He tells us over in 1 John 3, verse 8, uh, For this purpose, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, God's purpose has never changed. Jesus' purpose has never changed. He is still, He is still, He is still being manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Now, now He's not here in person doing that. He's at the right hand of the Father. He's there in heaven. But He has, he has commissioned the church to continue to do what he would be doing if he was here. And through the church, he is still doing it. Amen? Through the believers, the true believers, he's still doing this. He works through his body. Hey, that's us. So that's me. Say it. Come on. That's me. That's me. Well, you, that's weak. Come on. Let's say it. That's me. Hallelujah. That's me. That's me because we're here. We're believers and we're here. Amen. We've been born of the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, and we're here. And, and he, is try, he, is work, he wants to work through His body and to continue to do through His body what he, His purpose was to begin with. He's still destroying the works of the devil. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's look at some, you know, let's go over to, go over to the... Uh, Let's go over to 1 John there, chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. He begins to talk here about, uh, through the Apostle Paul here, the Lord's talking about the deceptions of the last hour. Little children, verse 18. Little children, it is the last hour. Well, my goodness, if that was the last hour, where are we in this thing? We must be in the last second. Last second. You know, you say, well, how can that be? Well, you know, Second uh, Peter 3, 8 tells us how that can be. He says, but beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Y'all get that? 
So where are we? If it was the last hour then, where are we now in the last days? We got to be at the very end of the last days, that's for sure. Amen. And, uh, you know, one day is as a thousand years with the Lord, a thousand years is one day. And he says, uh, and as, as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, well, there's going to be an Antichrist. Notice if you, if you, if you in your Bible that Antichrist is capitalized. That's an individual, a, a demon-filled individual that's coming to rule the world. But you know what? He can't come till we're out of here. He can't come into power till we're out of here. I don't care how hard he tries. He cannot come into power to rule like he, the, you know, it tells us in the Bible he's going to do it for seven years, you know, through the great tribulation time there. He's going to, he's going to rule the world. But he cannot do that as long as we are the church is here. And because we're still here, that means Jesus is still destroying the works of the devil. Amen. He's still destroying the works of the devil. Now, and he said, even now many antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. So the world is full of antichrist spirits. America is full of antichrist spirits. What is an antichrist spirit? It's a spirit that opposes Jesus Christ. It opposes Almighty God, denies God, opposes God, opposes Jesus, the Christ. Verse 19 says that it went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But, now here's the verse we need to get a hold of. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. You have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. You didn't know you knew all things, did you? Well, the real you knows all things. See, you are a spirit. You possess a soul. You live in a body. That's what makes you a human being. But if you've received Jesus Christ, you've been born again, then you become a supernatural human being. And it tells us over in, in, in the Scriptures uh, in Corinthians, it says, He who is joined to the Lord. See, so you're in the new birth, we're joined to the Lord. And he says, He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So, you are one spirit with the Lord if you've been born again. So, you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. You're. How many believe Jesus knows all things? Okay, and if you're joined to the Lord, you, spiritually you know all things. Now you got a problem. You got a head that's getting in your way. You got a mind. You got a natural will that has to be conformed to the divine will of God. When you know the will of God, you have to conform it your will to his will and that head is in your way so some people say well you got to get it out of your head into your spirit no you got to get it out of your spirit into your head because your head's where your problem is your head don't know what your spirit knows and God's trying to get what you got in the spirit into your understanding in your head that's why he's given us the word that's why he's given us the Holy Spirit to work with us, to help us. Hallelujah. Thank, you. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. So, you, 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 uh, spirit, your spirit knows all things. Hallelujah. We have an anointing from the Holy One, Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you know you have Jesus' anointed in you? Amen. If you're joined to Him spiritually, you have His anointing in you. Now, let's go on and read here a little bit. It says, I have written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that I have written to you because you do not know the truth, 
I've written to you not because you do not know the truth. Can't leave out that word because. But because you know it and there is no lie and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? Those antichrist spirits that's working in so many people today. He is antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Now, you get, you're getting a lot of Scripture this morning. But the message ain't going to be that long. But you're going to get a lot of Scripture because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So we're going to get a lot of Scripture here. Verse 24, Therefore let, he, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that He has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. See, that's the enemy's greatest weapon, deception. He's a deceiver. And he's deceiving so many people today. He's, he's, he's deceiving so many preachers today. See, we get out of this word, we get, you can get deceived. Then verse 27. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. It's in you, it's in your spirit. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in Him. Now, listen, you need to understand really what the Lord is saying there. Um, he said the anointing abides in us, and then this doesn't mean you don't need others to teach you. It means you have the anointing in you that will let you know what is truth and what is error. That's what He's talking about here. You have an anointing that will let you know what you're hearing, whether it's from a teacher or whatever. You always need to check it out with the Word of God. Be like those Berean Christians in the book of Acts. It says they search the Scriptures daily to see if what they were being taught is the truth. If they've been taught the Word of God, they've been taught the truth because the Word of God is the truth. Hallelujah. You know, really, this, he says the same thing over in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 11. He says, none of, them, none of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. In other words, when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, you, you, will, you will know. Amen? You will know. You will know Him. You will know Him. You will know God. You're in relationship with God. He's now a personal Lord and Savior to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that anointing abides in you. So we don't have to take someone else's word about what God is like. Amen. We don't have to live off of someone else's revelation. We can know God personally. Amen. Thank God for the fivefold ministry. God set the fivefold ministry in the church for the purpose to, to teach and to equip you to do the work of the ministry. That's exactly what the fivefold ministry is for. He, he, and he anoints that fivefold ministry to teach, preach, to equip the body, the believers, to do the work of the ministry. Because you know the fivefold ministry, there's not enough of us to do it. We, we're involved in it just like you should be involved in it, but we all have to be involved in it. We're all really the ministers, aren't we? We're, we're, we're serving the Lord. We're, we're ministering uh, for the Lord. And uh, 
So it's not saying here that we don't need others' insights and we can't benefit from what they have to say. It is saying that all of us believers have our own personal teacher in the person of the Holy Spirit. He's the real teacher, isn't he? And he is in every believer. You couldn't be a believer if you didn't have the Holy Spirit. You couldn't be saved if you didn't have the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he has, he has anointed us to understand and know the truth. Jesus makes this very plain over in John chapter 14, verse 26. He said, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Oh, that, that, you know, it's a one, he's here to help us. Amen. He's called alongside us. He's in us, but he's also called alongside us. He wants to direct our steps. See, he is God present here with us. He wants to direct our steps. He wants to keep us in the will of God. You know, uh, Paul said over in Philippians there, and it's a scripture that we ought to get a hold of and claim every day, for it is God who works in me to will and to do his good pleasure. For it is God which works in me. God the Holy Spirit works in me to will and to do his good pleasure. You know, he's, he's here in a servant role to the Father and the Son, even though he's just as much God as they are. And he's going to teach us, what did Jesus say here? He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. He'll bring to our remembrance. If we'll get in this word and get this word in us, he will always bring it to our remembrance when we need it. And we need it every day. We need it every day. So we're talking about the yoke a bondage being destroyed. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. The works of the devil are bondage that he puts into our lives. And we have an anointing that can destroy that because we have Jesus. Oh, we sing about it this morning. How wonderful. How wonderful our Lord Jesus is. See, now, you know, so there's yokes that need to be destroyed. Yokes that are bondages of the devil. Now, there's a good yoke. You know, a yoke was when they'd, they, 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 they would, you know, take the oxen or, or whatever they were using to, to plow with and work with, and they, they'd put a, they, they'd yoke them together with this yoke. And, uh, and teach them to work together. Well, there is a good yoke. Jesus says, if your burden come unto me, my yoke is easy. That's the good yoke. Amen. We want to, get, we want to stay yoked to Jesus. Amen. And uh, walk together with Jesus. Work together with Jesus. So that's what they did in the the, the New Testament church, you know. Uh, uh, let's quickly go there. If you go, go to uh, uh, Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Hallelujah. And, and you know, we know, you know, he gives the great commission here in verse uh, chapter 16, verse 14. And it, and it tells us all about the great commission, the signs that will confirm the word and so forth. And then it says, verse 19, this is a verse I wanted to get to. It says, so then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, now, it didn't say the fivefold ministry. It said, with them, the body of Christ. With them, the believers. Uh, because whoever believes, these signs shall follow whoever believes. You know, I, that's, our, that's on our end. We have to do the believing. It says, verse 20 says, And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, 
and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. You know why we're not having more of the word of God confirmed is because we're not working with him like we should work with him. He's here to, he's here to work with us. But we've got to work with him. We've got to cooperate with him. Amen. So now the, the, these evil yokes that the enemy brings. See these bondages the enemy brings and tries to. Has put on so many of the, in the body of Christ. Bondages. We're talking about Satan bondage now. What are these, bond, these yokes? Well a yoke then is anything that bounds us to something that we shouldn't be bound to. Amen. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 in the King James Version says, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy, thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Well, folks, we're in that day. That day has been here ever since the church came into existence. The church of the living God. When did it come into existence? When Jesus was raised from the dead. And then we become a part of it when we believe what he did through us through his death, burial, and resurrection. So I'm just going to throw out some, 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 some yokes of the enemy here. We're all familiar with these. Sickness is a yoke of the enemy. Pain is an o a, a yoke of the enemy. Yeah. Oppression or depression, mental or emotion, that is a yoke of the enemy. Financial bondage, financial debt that puts you into bondage is a yoke of the enemy. Poverty is a yoke of the enemy. Failures are yokes of the enemy. Unforgiveness, bitterness, that's a big one in the body of Christ. Unforgiveness or bitterness against anyone, that is a yoke of the enemy. Barrenness. Marriages fail failures. Anything that's binding us up and hindering us from fulfilling God's will and purpose for our lives are yokes of the enemy, strongholds. But bless God, there's an anointing that destroys the yoke of the enemy. Hallelujah. 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 You have that anointing in you to know the truth. Amen. But there's an anointing that comes on us that will break the yoke of the enemy. It's Jesus' anointing on us that breaks the yoke of the enemy. Amen. And I believe, I believe that when God called me into the ministry, He gave me an anointing to accomplish what He called me to do. And if he calls you into the fivefold ministry, he gives you an anointing to accomplish what he calls you to do in the fivefold ministry. So I believe there's anointing on the fivefold ministry that can help set the body of Christ free from the yokes of the enemy. It's not, it's not our anointing, it's Jesus' anointing on us. Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe. Uh, we can lay hands on you, and Jesus' anointing will set you free if you will believe. See, that's our part. That's everyone's part. You must believe. You must believe that the, God has given us an anointing, amen, that when our hands are laid upon you, that, he, that, that anointing will set you free. It ain't us setting you free. It's the anointing of Jesus. Jesus' anointing that's going to set you free. Amen.